See you then. Welcome to Cast. Hi, my name is Donald Matanga, and no, I'm not a Bond villain. And my name is Lyric McDonald, and yes, I do know all the words. Okay, so for those of you that don't know, CAST stands for College and Student Television. CAST will be showcasing all the talent that we have here at Harlow College. We'll also be letting you know what's happening and how you can get more involved. If you would like to promote your area and your students... Fantastic talent. <laughs> or even just to know more about CAST, please contact Andy Moore for more information. On with the show. Okay, let's get started. On today's show, we'll be talking to Delta Montaigne about the new K building from which we'll be filming in here today. So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome Delta Montaigne. <laughs> so, I'm going to ask you, you're the head of all this. You're the head of media, journalism and photography. Yeah. How, how, what was your first initial reaction when you found out that the area was going to be moving? Um, I was surprised. Obviously, it wasn't expected because I only just got the role as uh, Assistant Academy. Um, but I went for it straight away. Yes, no doubt about it. So when I heard about the new plans for the open plan and all the images like it represented Google offices, I knew I had to run with this project and we ran 100 miles an hour. But the idea, there was lots of problems, there was barriers um, and I think there was like people in between that had different ideas and obviously I had this focus that what kind of image I wanted to put across for the learners is that I wanted them to feel like they were coming into work and not coming into a classroom. Mm. So Delsa, how are these new facilities impacted on the students' learning? Um, well, I think students appreciate, I think they're appreciating what they've got because, particularly second years, because they know what we didn't have last year and now what we have. Um, things are slowly coming in, bits and pieces like lights and cameras, um, but I think we had a great resource anyway, like the max. I think, you know, the max provision was the key for obviously a resource, but we need obviously, it's great having this environment you know, the great floor, the great trees and everything else, but we need equipment to support the learning as well. Well, as a second year student myself, I do notice that in some of the printers, there's just quite a lot of paper hanging around. And I've heard like all these rumours about e-learning, so could you just tell us a bit more? Yeah, um, the cost impact for printing is massive across the college. I did hear um, it does cost around about 80,000 a year just for paper alone. Um, we're not one of the highest users of paper and that's why we're encouraging more e-learning about working online. So we have introduced to uh, Padlet to some of the classes last year about producing all of the unit work purely just online so they don't have to print at all. And now obviously the pressure is on and there's lots of funding from the government that we are to use e-learning uh, online applications and also now the next stage is devices. So, the big rule, one of our key rules, no mobile phones in the classroom. So we're doing experiments that we're encouraging mobile phones in the classroom, purely only for learning, not to just go on Facebook and chat with your mates, but use it as a tool for your expansion of learning. There was a time where I personally, and I've seen this yeah. around the college, where Padlet has been quite problem problematic for them, yeah. temperamental in some ways. Um, maybe sure. it's home internet, maybe it's the site itself. Sure, um, yeah. Now, I've found, I've, I found it useful, like, it's a great idea. However, some days when, say, just before a deadline, yeah. it, that's when it becomes quite temperamental. <laughs> sure, yeah. I mean, they, I think what happens, there's always barriers to everything. Everything you do every day, but the key thing is that we need to be positive about what has been thrown recently with e-learning. And that's the barrier about being negative, saying, oh, it doesn't work, I hate Padlet, you know, and then that's where we can never move on. Yeah. So it's dragging the past, what mm. you're currently doing. 
So in regards to the Padlet, I do remind my learners to save the documentation as a PDF every mm. lesson. So, you know, if suddenly the internet went down, you still got the basic resource. If it does go down, you've got a deadline, you've still got that, you can submit the remaining work on Word document, which is yeah. acceptable. Thank you, Delta, for participating. We're now going to get into the less serious stuff. We're going to play a cast game show called Know Your Area. Good evening, Delta Montaigne, and welcome to Know Your Area. Now in these 60 seconds, I'll be firing just general questions on how well you know your area and your colleagues. Okay. Question number one. How many chairs are there all together in the open plan area? 75. See, I'm afraid I asked you all together in the open plan area. You seem to have forgotten the journalism centre. The answer I was looking for was 103. Question number two. How many SLR cameras do students have access to? 12. Correct, spot on. Question number three. How much does your area spend on paper a week? £960 a month. The correct answer was £240. Question number four. He's been going by the name of Cliff Linford for many years. But what is Cliff Linford's middle name? Sydney. Correct. Question number five. Name me five AAM team members. There's Sue Barr from HE Journalism. Karen Harrison for Visual Arts. Uh, Charlotte from Business. Francis from Access. Yes, one more. Um, Debbie Davies from IT. Correct. Well done, Delta Montaigne. It's clear you know your area. You scored three out of five. Now we return to Don and Lyric back in the cast studio. <laughs> College, we've had a few famous faces. We've had David Cameron and Ed Miliband. A few journalists have been fortunate enough to ask them a few questions. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome the one and the only Ellie Pritchard. Last month, the college were very lucky to entertain a guest who turned out to be no other than Ed Miliband, the Labour leader. Mr Miliband was here to talk about a variety of issues with the top BBC political editor, Nick Robertson. Ellie, you were asked to participate in this college event, so what were you there to do? Um, well, I, for the BBC, we, uh, there was a few of us and we spoke to Ed Miliband, we got to meet him and um, ask him, some, we all had a question each that we could ask him and it was filmed. And um, he was here for a speech, so we could uh, go into that as well. Well, were you nervous? I knew I would have been like, I wouldn't know what to say. Oh, I was um, I was really nervous the night before, but once he came in, like, I sort of thought about it as like, you know, he is a person, so it, yeah. it would be okay to speak to him and everything. So it was but in the day, whatever you're going to say, it's not like. It's yeah, be I was worried I was going to offend him. Yeah. <laughs> You're looking forward to interviewing more people in the future. Yeah, no, I really would like to. I'd like to become more confident in it. And do you feel like the college has like helped you to do that, especially with bringing forward so many like different yeah. types of people, so many opportunities and things like that? They've really helped me a lot. So if I put you on the spot now to ask, <laughs> ask a question, what would you ask us? Oh God, I don't know. Um, oh well, actually, um, yeah, I have got one. Um, so, how have you enjoyed presenting your first TV show? Uh, oh. <laughs> um, it was, you know, it's been great. Finally doing it, it's been great. Um, like you said, you were nervous the night before with Ed Miliband, but once you come to actually doing it, you realise it's human. Similarly, in that way, you look at how hard the production team have worked, exactly, the setup, yeah. everything. It really shows how, um, even though we're sort of the talent, we're, we're not doing as much as perhaps the Somebody people. Somebody else, exactly. yeah, behind so everything. You learn to appreciate what they do for you, so you want to give back. It also makes you realise how long it actually takes. Like the whole production of like just creating it, just like the script in itself took a few weeks. So being able to participate in something like this, it is such a huge opportunity as well. So I am really grateful for it. So what did you actually like speak to him about? So what was the questions that even you and some of your other mates that came up with? Um, well, I don't know. I, I wanted to speak to him about like what he, his plans were for Labour and and how he was going to represent the working person, because I think a lot of people have been put off recently. And, um, yeah, he answered those really well. It's just sort of whether he acts on them in the right way. So what else was asked? So, like, obviously, that's your question. So what, what yeah. in, like, 
What did you think was a good question? Because you found out some more information about it. Yeah, well, um, in the speech, the conference that I went to, um, there was a lot of people in there who were asking some questions just mainly about the future for Labour, really, and uh, where they stood on protecting the NHS and things like that. So, yeah. OK, so you know Eddie, 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 <laughs> Dave's little brother. <laughs> what a geezer. Anyway, um, I watched something on a YouTube advert. Um, I don't know you know YouTube adverts. Normally I skip them, but something really caught my eye. It was an advert for Conservatives. And uh, they p portrayed David as this sort of like protagonist and really role model for young kids. Mm -hmm. And it, it showed a sort of like a mockumentary of how many f uh, females um, sort of fangirl him. And I thought that was quite amusing. Yeah. So, so that was quite clever to target the young female and male audience for votes. Now, going back to Labour and, and Ed, do you think he will be a charismatic uh, leader for our country? Um, I, I'm not. Sh I think he comes across a lot better in real life. I think behind behind camera, he just he doesn't always come across as good as he intends. When I was watching his speech, I just it really caught my attention. He speaks a lot better when he's speaking to people and he's and not to an audience, not to a camera. I think that that's the important thing. It really definitely caught my attention. So do you feel like Ed should go round to more like colleges like he did here? So obviously it's influenced you by you saying he speaks better to people than he does to the camera. So by having him go around to other colleges, other schools and things like that, you might think it have the influence over more young people to be more interested in Labour or just yeah. politics in general. I definitely think that it would be really good, if they're not even just Ed Miliband, for more MPs to get involved with young people and interest young people in politics, because I don't think they always do that very well at all. So, no, he did really well. If more, I think if he did that more, then maybe he'd have a better name for himself. Thank you for your time, Ellie. Oh, thank you for having me. Ladies and gentlemen, Ellie Pritchard. <laughs> thank you for joining us on today's episode of Cast. I hope you guys all enjoyed it. <laughs> and now I'd like to thank my co-host, Lyric McDonald. <laughs> and me, Donald Matango. Thank you once again for joining us. Thank you very much.